Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Imagine excavating a very early royal necropolis and stumbling on this. What looks like a large solid basalt sarcophagus, beautifully made with intricate detail and showing the god Osiris on his deathbed, immortalised in stone forever. The year is 1898 and we're at Umm el Kab in Abydos, where Emil Amelinio is leading an important excavation. At this time, knowledge on the history and culture of ancient Egypt is limited but growing, with so many important sites still waiting to be excavated. But this incredible find speaks for itself, and surely this must be the tomb of Osiris. That was a millennial's belief when he published his findings in 1899 in a book titled The Tomb of Osiris. Amelinio was born in 1850 and he began his career working for the French Catholic Church before studying Egyptology. He would then work for the French archaeological mission in Cairo as a specialist in the Coptic language and the history of the Egyptian Christian Church. Somehow, probably from his friendship with Victor Lauré, the then director of the Egyptian Antiquity Service, Amelinio got an exclusive five-year contract to excavate in Abydos. But by all accounts his archaeology skills were limited. His work was not the best. He knew that Umm el Kab was rich in ancient Egyptian artefacts because it had long been a local custom for the people of surrounding villages to visit this site on Good Friday and obtain playthings for the children. Good Lord. As Amelinio and his team moved in, on New Year's Day 1898, he made the bold announcement he had discovered the tomb of the god Osiris as the site he was excavating was clearly a tomb and it was loaded with artefacts relating to this well-known powerful god of the Egyptian pantheon. For the next 12 days, Amelinio would completely clear out the tomb, but in a very haphazard manner, discarding whole piles of important artefacts and only keeping the largely complete items, overlooking and ignoring anything that wasn't intact. On January the 2nd, 1898, Amelinio discovered the large black basalt object which at first was thought to be the sarcophagus of the god. It was found in the southwest corner of the tomb and it was lying on its left side. The design is beautiful, with the two long sides depicting the body of a lion. There were hawks on top that represented the god Horus, son of Osiris, and they were guarding each corner. But of course the main focus was Osiris himself, lying on his back, mummified and wearing the white crown of Upper Egypt. His wife, the goddess Isis, was perched above him and she was represented by a kite. On the site's eastern side in Chamber D, Amelinio also found a skull, which he believed to be the skull of Osiris. This, together with the beautiful black sculpture, a votive ostracer that he found on the desert floor above the tomb, and a grand staircase he interpreted as the staircase of the great god, well, to him, this was enough to conclude that he had indeed found the tomb of the god. He believed Osiris was a real living person, which we now know was never the case, and he would go on to interpret another tomb inside the necropolis as the final resting place of both Horus and Set. His 1899 publication is 150 pages long and includes five plates of amazing photographs, but since day one his finds were met with scepticism. For example, the school was examined and found to belong to a woman a discovery that strangely did not alter Amelinio's hypothesis. One sceptic was the great Flinders Petrie, who was itching to move into the site and excavate for himself. Thankfully, in the same year Amelinio's work was published, 1899, 
Gaston Maspero became the director of the Egyptian Antiquities Service, and Amelinio's five-year exclusive excavation contract was overturned. And so, Flinders Petrie was finally allowed in. Petrie would totally re-excavate the site that was botched by Amelinio, and it was soon apparent that the Frenchman had overlooked and discarded so many critical finds. Even a human arm that was still adorned with gold and turquoise jewellery, and surprise surprise, many objects included the Serec of King Jur, the third king of the First Dynasty. Petrie would publish two volumes on his work in Abydos, with detailed text and 130 plates, properly interpreting Amelinio's original finds. The Tomb of Osiris was now quite clearly the Tomb of Jur, and the so-called Tomb of Horus and Set was in fact the Tomb of Kasakemwe of the Second Dynasty. The basalt Osiris bed sculpture was later examined by Egyptologist Anthony Leahy, and it was found to have been made in the 13th dynasty. But to give Amelinio some credit, in the Middle Kingdom of ancient Egyptian history, the Tomb of Jur was transformed into a ritual site, and it was known as the Tomb of Osiris, a place that pilgrims from all over Egypt would visit. The Middle Kingdom Egyptians knew that this was a royal necropolis from the earliest times, and so they likely assumed that Osiris himself was buried at this site somewhere. And for reasons unknown, the decision was made to turn Jer's tomb into a shrine that was dedicated to Osiris. Why they chose to transform Jer's tomb specifically we of course will never know, but we do find many dedications to Osiris at this site, and they date back to the 11th, 12th and 13th dynasties. It was clearly associated with Osiris in the Middle Kingdom, and had even greater importance in the second intermediate period that followed. Kings were building on the ancient royal necropolis, stele were placed to mark the sacred area, and the stairway that was found by Amelinio was built in the 13th dynasty. Pilgrims came from miles around, People wished to be buried close by, and a play surrounding the events of Osiris's life was even performed here to the masses. It was so important that any trespassing or illegal building on the site would lead to the sentence of death by burning. We now know it was King Jed Keperu of the 13th dynasty who adorned the tomb with the fine basalt sculpture, because although damaged, it was discovered that his name was written on the side. The popularity of the designated Tomb of Osiris continued into Egypt's late period, and it only ended with the Persian invasion, although it appears that some offerings did continue in the Roman era as well. The actual tombs of the early dynastic kings is a fascinating subject, and I'll cover them on the Ancient Architects channel in the future, but today I just wanted to present this interesting story of discovery. Amelinio was not the best archaeologist, maybe he was blinded by the idea of fame and fortune, but technically he did discover the tomb of Osiris. It just wasn't exactly what he thought it was. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.